Duterte's war on drugs, explained. From July 1st to August 30th of this year, 550,000 houses were visited, 12,900 suspects arrested, 800 search warrants implemented, 895 suspects killed, and 626,000 drug user and pushers surrendered. This means that 97.8% surrendered, 2% arrested and only 0.14% killed. What about the accusation of extrajudicial killings? Did Duterte condone extrajudicial killings? This has been shown to be not true. In fact, in his inaugural speech he said, As a lawyer and a former prosecutor, I know the limits of the power and authority of the president. I know what is legal and what is not. My adherence to due process and the rule of law is uncompromising. And in his State of the Nation address he said, To our police officers and other officials, do your job, and you will have the unwavering support of the office of the President. I will be with you all the way. Abuse your authority and there will be a hell to pay. For you will have become worse than criminality itself. I order the National Police Commission to hasten the conduct of investigation and adjudication of administrative cases against police officers involved in criminal activity and illegal activity and prescribe policies on lifestyle checks for PNP members. What about his shoot to kill orders? This is what he actually said. I repeat again for all everybody's consumption. Do not kill if you are not in danger of losing your life. But in effecting an arrest, when there is a violent resistance, because in effecting an arrest you have to overcome the guy to bring him to the folds of the law. If you cannot bring him to the police station, if you cannot place him under the control of the law, because that is your job to arrest, which means to overcome the resistance. But if the resistance is violent, thereby placing your life in jeopardy, shoot and shoot him dead. Can I be more clearer than that? But who is behind the vigilante killings? For the extrajudicial killing, they say, it's not the work of the police to be wrapping people with plastics and putting it in the bag. That is not the job of the police. I just told him that one bullet will do. Why do you have to wrap it as it waste your time? So, who are actually behind these killings? First, there are drug groups killing other members of competing drug groups. This is also happening in other countries. Second, drug lords hire assassins to kill users and pushers who have surrendered to the police. This is to silence them and prevent them from exposing the drug lords. There are also other deaths unrelated to the war on drugs, which are blamed on Duterte. The opposition who controls most of the local media blame these deaths to Duterte to make him appear as a mass murderer. Pero yung pinatay na hindi natin na binalot ng mga sako, binak na plastic. The police, I assure you, would not waste their time on that. So kung pati ba naman yan, isalay ninyo, no, wala akong kamuang-uang, pakisali na lang po sa namatay ng lahat dyan sa punerarya, pati yung may mga cancer, isalay na lang ninyo. May mga diabetes, may mga... Kasi yung lahat na nakita ninyong patay, binibilang ninyo sa akin. Baka yung gusto ninyo, yung, yung taga-dabaw dito, sa magbilang ako sa punerarya, lahat na, lahat ng patay. Bakit lang yun ang binabalot ng mga sako? Because the accusation itself is very stupid. It assumes right away na yung may patay dyan, guberno ang pumatay. Police officers found involved in drugs are relieved, investigated, and prosecuted.
In fact, Duterte publicly named officials involved in drugs. There are generals, police officials, congressmen, mayors, judges, and a senator. Drug lords and public officials involved in drugs are now trying to bring the fight in the international arena due to the fact that 91% of the Filipinos support Duterte. Will they succeed?